what's happening, Josh, mate? How are we doing? I'm doing broad. It's uh, nice to be here. Thanks for having me. Yep, thanks for taking the, taking the time to be here, man. So um, for anyone that doesn't know you, mate, uh, tell me a bit about yourself. What is it that you do? Um, so I am a freelance creative. Um, my like my main my main output is is music. So uh, I've been DJing under the alias Kilimanjaro um, for the past maybe four or five years now, um, and been doing some production and stuff under that alias. And then I've also got a few other bits and pieces. I've got In Season, which is like a hip hop lifestyle brand, um, and then I just do like modeling acting, writing, just when I can, just to fit it together. But obviously the past 18 months have been, uh, have been a bit different for everyone. Mm. That's it, mate, especially the, the creative sector. Yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. So, yeah. That's... It's been tough, mate. So how, how have you sort of filled the void that's been missing? What, what are sort of some of the things that you've been working on? Or maybe did you get a chance to work on other things that you wouldn't have had the time for? Um, do you know what, bro? If I'm being honest, it was just um just a really good time for personal development mm-hmm. just really reflecting on who i am as a person like what i want to achieve like what i want to see over the like, next phase of my life and i think lockdown was the first lockdown and anyway, it was really good just to slow everything down and just try and reconnect with myself and um it was really good because my family's all quite spread out but we were um we had like two Zoom calls like a week with the fam, which which we like obviously everyone's so busy, you never really have time for that. So I was just really thankful to be able to reconnect with them all. Um and yeah, just get a bit healthier and stay off the bevy for a bit and started running, which I never thought I'd do. And yeah, it was good. The first lockdown was really good for just kind of reconnecting yeah. with myself. Nice mate. Um you talk about that. What what would you say that some of the, the personal things that you discovered were? Was it certain aspects of yourself that you you didn't like maybe you didn't realise or like was it as you said career aspirations and looking forward to the future? Yeah, I think it was just like because kind of since I came out of university, I've I've always been like chasing chasing the music stuff. It's like it was nice to kind of take a step back and just look at like what I had achieved, because um, you never really have time to do that when you're just constantly like chasing constantly constantly pushing forward your foot's constantly on on the throttle so um yeah it was just a just a really good time to just like kind of see like okay like this is what you have done like a lot of people compare themselves to their peers and compare themselves to like people in their same age bracket and um just because obviously I was at university so then I'm looking at like a lot of my mates who came out of university and did what what we studied as a career and like what their lives have looked like compared to mine and it was actually quite nice to just like be like yeah like I have like achieved a lot even though it's in a different sphere and, and mm-hmm. not along a different path from other people but I think mainly as well just like was able to just look at myself as a man again and just as a as a human being and um just kind of look inwards and there's all there's obviously stuff that like I wasn't happy about with like my character and stuff that I was happy with and just kind of looking at that and seeing what I could change and what I could work on it. Yeah, it was good, man. It was an interesting mm-hmm. time. And then um, obviously there was that, like, it's, kind of, it's hard to call it a summer because I don't know yeah. there wasn't really much happening, but um, there was that time. And then because um, obviously nothing was still happening, I had to just get my head down and just had to work in, in a field in a sector that I never thought I was going to do and I think I learned a lot in that time because it was like so like that you, you don't you, you if you don't work you don't eat you know what I mean so I just had to get my head down and I was just yeah learned a lot about myself character wise like it's, there's a there was a graph that I had to put in that I didn't didn't think I'd didn't think I had so it's yeah. good man it was it's good it's interesting nice, but we're hopefully coming out the other side now and so yeah. Um, um, me and my, my mate actually on Saturday night had a conversation similar to that just about how the, the, the time the 18 months has been good for reflection and like he, he has his own page where he sort of posts like thoughts that he has and it's sort of like reflections about life is good man it's like good advice and then um, he, he just said that a lot of the stuff that what you were saying the, the career stuff and like time to reflect and question what actually what is it I'm doing with myself and 
this what you're talking about with the degree and like uni and that is where I'm at just now. Like I've just graduated in business, but it's like with music and like creativity and things like that. I just don't see sometimes question is that the sector that I want to go into. So I, I definitely agree with what you're saying. It's a weird thing, isn't it? Like seeing other people getting grad jobs and things and you and it mate, it's like social media as well, man. You see success and you constantly totally. compare. Totally, man. It's that it's 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 good for, for inspiration and and things like that but then also at the same time it's so easy just to be like oh what's that person doing or yeah yeah they are like and yeah easy to fall very easy to fall into the trap but mm. yeah yeah nice mate so in terms of music um when did you first start to get an interest in music was it a childhood thing what were the early influences and sort of your earliest memories um so yeah i've been in, into music since um since i can remember i've got an older brother a younger brother and a younger sister and all of us are are involved in music we've all been involved in music since like a young age and it's it's quite funny because uh, our parents aren't like really musical at all mm -hmm. but literally like all four of us are like um are very musical like my little sister um is studying a master's at the conservatory in birmingham she's doing uh, jazz vocals there little brother's uh, been in bands and he's working on a solo project um, James Leandu, check him out. Um, yeah, Gabriella Leandu also, check her out. Uh, and uh, yeah, they, he's been in, in bands and he's been doing his solo stuff like quite focused on that for the last little while. And then me and my big brother, we actually were in a band from, we've been working on music together since we were like 10, 11. Like I started playing drums when I was like maybe 12, I think. But even before that, we've always kind of been doing bits and pieces. But we were in a band called Our Future Glory, um, which kind of came together, I think maybe 2000 and, yeah, maybe like 2006. We started to really kind of work on stuff, like just before I started uni. And then um, it was like me, him, and the band kind of took a few different forms, but the core of it is um, me, my brother Mo and the guy called Sam and the three of us kind of were the main spine of it right through to the point where it was just the three of us and like that was that was my main musical output up until pretty much I started DJing actually and um, maybe like 2016 we took a break maybe 2017 something like that but yeah I've been involved in music since since I was young and through maybe like gospel influences like the, the church when I was younger and um yeah just always always been into music so what um what genre was the the band pardon what genre was the music that you made in the band um so it was like like the final kind of form of it was like electronic pop um but heavily influenced by like block party um when we were when like their kind of first album silent alarm and then when they kind of became more electronic, we became more electronic. Mm -hmm. um, but my brother's an amazing songwriter. Um, and he uh, he brought the poppy side more into it alongside the synths. So mm -hmm. it was, yeah, really just catchy stuff, sing, like hooks that you can sing along to, courses that are quite catchy and high energy. But nice. Lots of, lots of fun, but, um, yeah. Sweet. How did you make the transition from band to DJ? Um, so that's quite a funny story. So we got signed to a label called Wall of Sound. Mm -hmm. um, I think it was just, we, we played Tea in the Park, I think. We played Tea in the Park um, 2015, sure. Uh, just on the tea break stage, which was, was sick. It was the same year that uh, Jerry Cinnamon broke, which was the riot man that guy's so funny <laughs> um, so much fun and then uh we got signed to this label wall of sound and they sorted us out uh, with a show in ibiza at the um international music summit which they hold at the hard rock hotel over there yep uh, played in bossa um so like got booked for that and we were kind of six it's going to be good fun and then the label were like can you guys DJ? And at that point, I was uh, running Hector's house in Dundee, and I'd been like around 
that kind of scene for like a long, long time. Like I've been going to the room since I was like 15, reading rooms, sorry, in Dundee for anything. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I've been around that scene for like a long time, but I'd always kind of been like, oh, like I'm the drummer. So like, that's what I'm going to focus on. Um, and then they were like, can you guys DJ? And we were just like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So then I think that, I think we were, the show was in, was in May. And then they told us about it in like maybe January, February. So I had like a few months and I just kind of put together just a wee set, nothing man. It was just like a kind of sunset um, poolside vibe. Okay. Um, maybe like, it's like 45 minutes. It wasn't long, but that was like the kind of boot up the arse that I, that I needed to kind of get into it. And then, Pretty much came back um, from my visa and just yeah, just bit by bit. Whether it was like a couple gigs a month, and then it was maybe like one gig a week, and then a couple gigs a week until the point where it was like like two, three gigs a week. And alongside the job I was doing full time at that point, I was like DJing maybe like three nights a week as well on top of it. So it was it was good. It was busy, um, but. Yeah, that was kind of my introduction. It was it was a sly one, but it got me in yeah. the door. <laughs> nice man. Yeah, Ibiza's good man. Um, so played in Bossa that's and I thought at first I thought you meant the Ibiza Rocks, but the Hard Rock Bar was that? Oh right, yeah, on in in San An. Nice man. But yeah, yeah, it was at the um, it was at the Hard Rock the hotel. So. Sweet. Sick. So just from that, you just sort of like. I, I can, I'm not bad at this, man. I could, I could have a go at this. Yeah, I mean, like, I think because I've always been into that side of music as yeah. well, like into the, into into the house kind of club side of music as well. That that also came across in like the drumming I was doing with the band, and then the production we were doing with the band as well. Like, it's all kind of electronically charged. But then I was able to, because I'm a drummer, obviously, it's a lot a lot of beat matching, um, a lot to do beat matching. But then I was able to bring, like, the kind of roots of, of who I am as a person. Like, I'm, I'm first generation UK, like, my, I'm, I'm a Zambian. So I was able to bring, like, my, my African roots through the music that I was playing. And it was, it was nice to have that expression that I'd never really been able to do before with the band. Not that we... Not that we couldn't do it, but I just had never really explored that side of things. So nice. it was definitely something that I was like, oh, okay, this is like another side of the music that I'm able to mm-hmm. express myself to. And that's at the bottom, bottom line is like, it's what I love, it's what I love to do. So. Nice. Yeah, I, do, I usually do some research on my guests before the podcast, but obviously didn't dig deep enough. I didn't, I didn't suss out the Tea in the Park gig. Um, oh, the, what was that like, mate? Was that good? Well, pardon? What was that like? What stage oh, did you play? Is it like King yeah, Tuts? Yeah, it was the yeah, yeah, it was the it was the King Tuts is the tea break stage. And like because as a band we'd kind of come out of Dundee, there was like quite a few bands before us who'd done it and it just looked like a lot of fun. And I think the timing was just really right for us at that point. Um but yeah, it was it was lots of fun. Like the slot that we had was it was one of the busiest, busiest of the of the weekend, which was which was amazing. And it felt like because we'd been doing it for like quite a while at that point, it felt like, you know, the hard work was paying off. And especially I think the first time I went to Tina Park was, yeah, like 2007. So it was nice to kind of almost like almost what, eight, nine years later, be back and be playing. And my mates were able to come and see us. And yeah, it was, it was a good vibe. I remember it was one of the first times my little brother came, had come to see us like properly and he was going like absolutely nuts. <laughs> Yeah, it's good man such such a good vibe and obviously Tina Park is is no more so it was it was an honour to to have done that um, yeah. as a band coming out of Scotland so. to be a part of it that's class mate yeah. um, well you mentioned Tina Park um, fast forward to um, 2021 mate and you are on the lineup for the, the return of the slam tent how does that feel that's it that sounds pretty you, you'll not get sick of hearing that <laughs> Bro, it's it's definitely it's 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 some buzz. Like obviously, yeah. slam tents like it's infamous in in, in yeah. Scotland, and um, to to be on the lineup for that, um, and to be playing on on the Sundays like it's huge. Um, I think as well because because of what I play, because of um, 
like my style it's going to be quite fun to kind of bring that energy um into like the slam tent environment and also push myself a bit to try some try some some new stuff and um yeah i'm just i'm really excited i think i think for everyone it's like it's like we've we deserve we deserve something you know it's been a long long 18 months and um a lot of stuff's been pushed um due to like dates moving and restrictions yeah, yeah. And yeah if we can get this one over the line i think it'll be it'll be a big big morale booster for especially for our age group our, our demographic you know people who just want to who are just dying to get back out and just be back in the festival scene and just kind of get lost in the music again so yeah I'm, I'm i'm looking forward to it i'm really excited very thankful for the opportunity and um, there's some really good names on the on the bill as well so yes yeah, it's gonna be an honor man i'm very excited yeah for sure week. i've got tickets mate so I'm, I'm, i can't wait it's gonna be it's gonna be massive um because that was another one of my questions it was um h- had you experienced like I didn't obviously didn't know that you had played Tate in the Park and that you'd been there as a punter. Like, is that something the slam tent something you have experienced? And yeah, yeah, yeah. I, it, I'd actually that the first time I went, and then when we played, they were the only two times that I actually been. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the first time I went, I we just say I got lost in the got lost in the slam tent <laughs> for for a few hours, man, and just kind of got consumed by it, but. Uh, yeah, it's, it's crazy to it's crazy to think that I'm like I'm getting to play it. It's like an amazing opportunity. Definitely something that I'm that I know I'm ready for. But again, just need to be thankful and just be in the moment. You know what I mean? Yeah. And and you're, am I right in saying you're first first on? Yeah, I think I'm. Op- I think I'm opening up Sunday. Yeah. I mean, as far That's as right. as far as the billings go, um, which will be, which will be good fun. Um, set the tone for the for the rest of the day Dude, have you seen that clip and it's like um it's like an old clip from team the park when they first open like the doors and everyone yeah, runs down that'll be you mate yeah. that'll be that'll be your yeah, set well, <laughs> honestly, honestly hopefully people have still got the energy by day three but oh, I'll, i'm sure that i'm sure they will mate <laughs> if, they if they don't have the energy then i'll definitely get them going that's for sure man that's for, for sure. sure yeah um I was lucky enough, like when I was like 15, 16, my dad took me to the park and I remember being with my big cousin and like walking by the slam tent and you can like look in and like it's completely dark and you're like, you can hear the the, the sub and the boom. Yeah. And like as you like walk in, it gets darker and darker and you're, and you're like right in the midst of it, man. It's crazy. Yeah. I remember just thinking like, what the fuck is going on in here, man? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's crazy. Yeah, it's, it's it was unlike anything I'd ever experienced before. Like especially... At, at that scale obviously you because at that point I hadn't really been to hadn't been out in Glasgow hadn't been out in Edinburgh really at that point so my only real experience of of that music in in a space was the reading rooms which is obviously like much smaller than the slam tent so to experience it in that capacity is yeah something completely different so yeah yeah very very excited yeah. I think for, for anyone who's Who's who hadn't been before? I think it's definitely going to be something that's going to stick with you for a long, long time. So, absolutely. Um, so you mentioned Hector's house, mate. So, were you were you like promoting events and like involved in events before you actually got involved in DJing? Yeah, yeah. So, um, I'm uh, quite close with Luke Anderson, who 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 runs Hector's, who's set up Hector's. Shout out, Luke. But um, uh, he was just expanding. Um, and the venue I was working at at the time, I was doing the marketing for them. And I knew Tom uh, from Fly, so I spoke to him. I was like, what's happening in Edinburgh? Like, who can I get up to Dundee to like do some stuff? And he put me in touch with Luke. Um, and we got them to do a couple of bits at the venue that I was working at. And then he got back in touch and was like, I'm looking for someone to run Hector's House Dundee. Would you be interested in? Yeah, so got into that and I'd done little bits and pieces but hadn't really run a full night myself before. Obviously, it was amazing support-wise and um, that's kind of what got me into the Edinburgh scene and like all the DJs that came up to play all the residents, I'm still really good friends with. Um, But yeah, that was like my first kind of foray into it Um, and yeah, we had some really, really good nights. Um, Dundee's an interesting city. Um, 
but yeah, we had some amazing nights in there. Um, yeah, 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 that was a lot yeah. of fun. I spoke to um, Jordan about Dundee and also uh, Frankie as well, and like they both spoke yeah. highly of it. And um, I, I'm from just outside Glasgow, man, so it's not somewhere that I, I've experienced, but the, uh, Frankie's always been on at me to come up for a Dundee dance event, so it's something that I think I'll definitely sort in the future, for sure. Yeah, for sure. DDE is, yeah, that's a, yeah, that's another, that's another thing to experience, so that's <laughs> a whole, whole different kettle of fish, but the city probably comes out for it. Like, yeah. obviously, pre-COVID, it was like bars would be packed. Like m- most most bars, if you can get a, get a set of decks and a sound system in there, they'd have like a lineup of like maybe like eight or nine acts across the day. Starts at about twelve and then runs right through till about ten, eleven, and then they normally do the after party um, at one of the larger venues. But yeah, it's like a proper proper Sunday sesh, like. Yeah. Really good one. So, it's a great concept. It's a good idea, man. Yeah, for, for sure. sure. I think it's not really. It's interesting because up in Aberdeen, they do a thing called May Day. It's the same same weekend. Um, but Edinburgh and Glasgow don't really don't no. really do that on on that bank holiday weekend. So it's so yeah, it's, it was interesting once I kind of moved down to Edinburgh, down to Glasgow to see like that that wasn't really a concept down here, but it's more of like a northern thing. So yeah, sure. nice mate. So, um, yeah, I was having a look at your Instagram as well. So, Season Radio. I, I initially thought it was just a radio show, but as you were saying, it's like a lifestyle brand. Um, do you think that hip-hop, rap, and stuff like that is something that um, is missing in Glasgow? Do you think that the, there is a space for it somewhere? Yeah, yeah, 100%. I mean, there's, like, a few people um, who are doing some amazing stuff. Um, to Gallus, who runs Magic City, um, one of my mates, Barrington, he he's he's obviously started up this night, Magic City. Um, and Casey, um, she runs a night called Peach. Those two are like two like top tier um hip hop nights in Glasgow. Like you can't really compare them to like what was happening before. I think you can get caught up in going out on R and B night and going to the R and B room. And then you just hear like your usual like single ladies, all that chat. And it's like that kind of became what hip hop was. Very mainstream. Scotland. And it's like, it's yeah, and it's like that's you can't even really call that scratching the surface because like the genre is like so so broad and so deep and there's so much more to enjoy within it. Um, and yeah, so definite, definite shout outs to Peach and, uh, and Magic City. Hopefully they, they can get, um, they can get back up and running after, yeah. after the lock, after the restrictions lift. Sorry, because yeah, I've had some, some of my best nights in Glasgow have been at, have been at Magic City and Peach. So yeah, I would highly recommend if you've never been before and you're into hip hop, then that's definitely a thing. But I think within season, because Peach and Magic City were, Quite established in the city already uh, and i just i just didn't want to do like an, a night i didn't want to do like another night because i mm-hmm. think when you start doing a night then you kind of get pigeonholed and it has it becomes this thing it stops it stops being the joy kind of comes out of, out of it that makes sense um and i was like i want but i still want to do something that allowed me to express myself through hip-hop so I set up in season in 2018, 18, 19. It's hard, man. See yeah, with this. We've with lost this, a year. Yeah, man, <laughs> I'm just like, my date's all over the place. But um, we'll say 2019. Yeah. 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 Nice. It was 2019. Yeah. Um, and we did like a launch party, which was. In a, in, a, in a basement in Glasgow, which is really cool, super intimate, like only 100 cap, um, just really good vibes. What, uh, bar, what bar was that? It was in um, Merchant City. Uh, the bar's called the Amsterdam, and oh, they yeah. had a basement space, um, but they've actually just turned that into a speakeasy. Um, I can't remember what it's called. I'd give them a shout out, but check that out. It's yeah. sick. The, um, um, the Amsterdam's cool, mate. I've been in a gig down at Below there, I seen a DJ in there, like my mates put yeah. on the night, and it was pro. It was such a cool, cool space, man. 
really cool space like it's proper low ceilings like you can really like we got we got a sound system in there and yeah properly kitted out it was, it was good fun really good fun and that was in august 2019 and then we did a second event in october up at the locale um, at Charing cross and that was more of like a day party vibe like uh we did food we did like a jerk chicken like pop-up thing sick man um, and then had like a few of my mates come through and dj for that and it was like you bought a ticket that got you like a couple of drinks some food and then entry and then it was just kind of more of like a daytime vibe i think because the the brand i want it to be i don't ever want to do anything that's like not inclusive so i want people to come if, if they come on their own or if they come with like four or five people they leave having met like-minded people and it's like you mingle and that that was like the energy like not about like that popping bottles kind of vibe which 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 can be fun don't get me wrong which can can be fun but for me just because i don't know just i just want to kind of do something a bit different um like the energy is kind of more come enjoy yourself experience something a bit different and then it's like you can go in, you can tell people, yeah, I did this. It was a lot of fun, something I hadn't done before. Um, and uh, Josh Barr, the local, he was he was sick, helped me, um, gave me a really good space, and yeah, we made it work. It was, it was a lot of fun. Um, I like that, mate. I like that. It was good. And then, obviously, you're stepping into like December. I went to it's a venue called bourbon um, and they invited us to to take over a couple saturdays um towards the end of the year which was cool to take the brand like to a different city and that went down really well every time um and then you hit january and you're like okay we'll slow down for a bit we'll start making plans for the next year and then obviously march hits and kind of everything goes out the window so yeah it's a bit quiet but towards the end of that last year um we've been in talks with the radio station about about doing it about t- taking over the hip-hop slot so i was able to get that up and running um i think it we kicked it off in november 2020 and um, so was able to run that a few times and then now we're just kind of looking for a new space to to do it kind of taking a step back and kind of want to figure out what station's going to do it justice because a very thankful for the opportunity but at the same time it's like you want to be on a station where it fits the demographic fits and you're able to express yourself fully without having any uh any boundaries or restrictions yeah. put on you. so what um what do you think about the scottish rap scene in terms of artists like um my mate is a big uh, hip-hop and rap fan and uh he sends me quite a lot of stuff and um he sent me recently the cipher that recently like ransom fa shogun yeah. mccroy done and like I, I was listening to it and i, I don't know what it is mate like it, like um i have a massive respect for like the artistry and the work and the wordplay and like I, i'm not i'm not a, an idiot when it comes to that where people would just disregard it and say no it's shit or whatever like i have massive appreciation for it but there's something about like the accent bro i just can't i don't know what it is man like what, what do you what is your opinion of it do you think so yeah it's interesting that you're talking about cypher because basically like i'm quite i'm quite i'm quite close with uh Effie with ransom mm-hmm. and yeah, with with joe shogun and i think because it's helped me get into it because i'm like Close for them, that makes sense. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but like, as far as like, I'm not lying, bro. Shogun, yeah. Like lyrically, yeah. Like if you Mate. break down what the guys say, mm, that's exactly that's what I'm saying, man. Like, um, it, I don't think it's not something that I would uh, regularly listen to, but in terms of like appreciation for the art, like. I have so much respect for it. And see um, the Rap Game UK, I, I, my mate sent me a lot of that and Shogun on it, man. He, he's like tearing folks' heads off, man. And like, literally, man. Like, <laughs> yeah, he's a savage, mate. He's good. Like one of the, um, one of the, I actually, I listened to a bit of him when his, when his, his first track dropped, but I was, um, I was uh, apprenticing, um, 
at studio in Edinburgh when kind of Joe was like coming through and it was actually my mentor and um, that like really like put me on to him because he was he's kind of really intellectual on that side of things and he was like breaking down like the raps and, and the yeah, bars yeah. And, and the flows and the way that he jumps in between different cadences and finds the pockets and stuff and that was when I was like okay let me let me listen to this kid mm-hmm. um and yeah obviously like he's kind of gone from strength to strength and Ransom as well, like obviously representing kind of the north northeast of Scotland as well. Like he's he's gone through his own journey, and um, to see him obviously on that first season, um, and and do so well, you know, he, he, as it's it's very it's hard, man. It must be hard being Scottish in that. Yeah, hundred percent, mate, hundred percent. Even even the judges, you hear them being like, oh, yeah, like. I don't really understand your accent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like the the talent and the skills there, but they need to do yeah. that extra bit. Yeah, right? I know, mate. I know. It's like um, I don't know for me if like it's my like the the like the sort of MC background in Scotland and like the the years where we've had like the SoundCloud beats and like sort of MC and and like I don't know if I've sort of stigmatized it and like I can't get rid of that if you know what I mean like. But in terms of like respecting the artists and respecting what they do, there I have huge respect, man, for sure. Um, but like, do you, do you think there's a market for it in Scotland? Do you or do you think, do you think just time it will take time, it'll just time to develop? Or? Oh, if I can say anything, yeah, time takes time. Everything yeah. takes time. Like, or it, it these guys might not ever see the full flowers that they should see mm-hmm. but they'll pave the way for like the next yeah yeah so what they what they do that's like oh, okay this is all right the next gen will be like okay like fully accepted and then the mm-hmm. next gen after that like look at if you look at that the actual grime scene in the uk it's like you had wiley skepta gets they were all they were all doing it you know risky road cyphers and all that and it like it like was so far away from mainstream music from Radio One at that point, and then they kind of opened the door for then the next people to come through. And then obviously you had Tiny Temple. He kind of like pushed right through and was sitting in that like pop pocket, but even he opened the door, moved it forward, and then to to a point and um, that track body. Um, which is a drill track that was number mm-hmm. one for like what five weeks yeah. like like if you actually deep that like a drill track was number one in the uk not <laughs> hip-hop charts not yeah, one yeah. extra like that's huge bro mm-hmm. and to see and obviously it's good because get skepta kano um they're all still they're all still putting out albums and stuff so there's they're, they're even though they opened the door, they're still able to reap the, the fruits now. Yeah. You've got, you've got like artists like Dave, who are, he's just announced his, his new album's going to be coming out, I think. Uh, this, this Friday, isn't it? Yeah, this Friday coming, which I'm so excited for. Like, Psychodrama, clear, clear, clearly, like, my favourite album that year when it came out and just he's on a different level when it comes to, to writing and artistry. Yeah. And he's only, what, 21 or something? Yeah, I think he's ah. the same age as uh, something like that, mate. Um, ah. It's crazy. Have you have you, um, have you you ever came across the podcast Dissect? Have you, are you aware of yeah, that? Yeah, love, love the Dissect podcast. Yeah, my, uh, my big bro actually put me on to Yeah, um, it's so good, man. Um, and they have a UK one on uh, Psychodrama, which I've listened to a few oh, of. Oh, do they? Yeah, yeah, there's a UK one of Psychodrama, mate, yeah. I'll definitely um, get that. Yeah, the, the guy that does it is the detail he goes on is incredible, man. It's so yeah. interesting. Like I listen to Frank Ocean Blonde, um Kendrick Dam, and I've listened to some of the Kanye ones as well. It's so good, man. I did i the first one I listened to was Kendrick um to Pimp a Butterfly. Mm-hmm. But then the first like the first kind of section of that, they go through Good Kid Mad City to like set up. Yeah, that's it. Just like you're just the, the 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 detail that guy goes into is absolutely unreal. And I was speaking to one of my one of my mates, Donald, and um, the other day, and he he said he got back into a few Kanye albums after listening. Yep. 
the, the podcast again. So mm-hmm. yes, yeah, I, I need to start running that one up again. But yeah, for sure, mm-hmm. such a such a good such a good way to. If you're really in, if you're really into music like that, it's definitely would highly highly recommend it. Hundred sure. percent. Yeah. Um. Like with the Damn album as well, it's an album that I loved and an album that I knew had a lot of meaning and a lot of like retrospect. But like listening to dissect and how the guy talks about. Kendrick's life and like what up until that moment and how yeah, the yeah. biblical references and you like until you really like dig deep with music like that you never fully appreciate it and understand it and as you said you then go back and you listen and what he's been talking about you hear and you're like geez oh man that's fuck, it's crazy you can just you you enjoy it more I think when you understand where the artist is coming from when they're yeah. writing it like it just it makes a lot more sense and like a like obviously like a really good beat and a really catchy flow will always be good. But when you can go back and you can understand like, oh, okay, that's what he's trying to portray. And like, that's why he started the track like that and he's ended it like that. And that's why the kind of the whole body of music goes across this like musical arc. And yeah, for sure. It's like, if, if you write music, I would 100% recommend Getting yeah, into that podcast. definitely. Yeah, listen to um, one of the SoundCloud sets you put up on in season, and I skimmed through like the track list and that, and I noticed some Bronson in there. Action Bronson, yeah, he's, yeah, he's, yeah. he's 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 the man. Um, he, he's going through his own crazy transition at the moment. Transformation, course. sorry. Like, obviously, I I got into him because um, of fuck that's delicious. Mm-hmm. And the advice because I, I love food. Like, I'm a YouTube chef 100%. Like, my <laughs> all my culinary skills come from watching YouTube videos. So, that was how I got into him. And then, obviously, um, his music's just, yeah. And then his personality, man, it's just, yeah, crazy. But to see him kind of go from like a, an overweight rapper chef to like this guy that's like powerlifting. <laughs> But still eating yeah. amazing food. It's like you have to respect that. You have to <laughs> yeah. respect. Yeah, the, the latest episodes, like he's like training at like six in the morning and then he's like cooking like is it calamari, like some Italian classic food and like the, the car park. This is like he's Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw that one. <laughs> yeah. And then the guy's like, Yeah, this is one of the best dishes I've ever had. And he's literally like cooking up on like the side of a car park, like no yeah. rules, man. He's, like when I watch him, like he just seems so original, like such an original thinker. Like he, I love, I love seeing that in people where you're just like, yeah, like that. No one's telling that guy what to do. Like he just does his own thing. Yeah, hundred percent. Like he's not. You can tell that he's not getting swayed by the labels or by what other people are doing in the scene. He's just on his own path, on his own journey. And I think we need we we need more artists like that. We need more people who who are original thinkers and. You're not afraid to do do things a bit differently, you know, be pioneers. Um, but at the end of the day, it's like that just paves paves the way for for the next generation of artists to come through and and really be themselves and yeah. give us something that we've never had before. So, so some of the bars he comes out with as well, man, they're absolutely off the scale, like um, like acting crazy. Oh, like there's so many it. lines in that. I think that's actually the one you played on the on the set. It might have been, um. Just I've watched a freestyle of him once and like he's just saying the maddest shit ever. <laughs> so funny. He's like, um, make make sure I wear four suits at the wake. <laughs> and then he just goes and get my dick sucked also. <laughs> yeah, you're just like, it's definitely not one that you're gonna be listening to in the car with your mom. Like, yeah, 100 like, percent Getting into the floor and you're oh <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, so oh yeah, so you also have a career in the modeling, like you said. So how, how did that come about? By the way, you're the first model I've had on this show, so that, that automatically makes you the best looking guy, mate. <laughs> well, do you know what? <laughs> I'm going to take that still, yeah? <laughs> yeah. Nah, but, uh, I wouldn't quite say... I mean, yeah, you can't... Yeah, it's hard to say you're a, you're a model if, unless you're doing it, like, full-time, full-time. But, yeah, I got into it because it was actually, it was actually the... the the day after my graduation, there was a girl I knew from Dundee who was studying at Edinburgh College of Art at the ECA, um, and she needed models for like her final year thing. So, um, hella hungover, got on the train at like seven a.m. from Dundee to Edinburgh, um, pitched up at uh, up at uh, Edinburgh Uni, 
feeling a bit on the ropes. <laughs> and I found a little corner of the room, passed out, woke up, and the room's just like full of models getting their like hair and makeup done. And I'm just like sitting there like, what's going on? <laughs> um, did that show. And then when it shows like that, you can obviously just get talking because there's like a lot of sitting around and stuff to do. And everyone's like, oh, you should like apply for this agency. And like, like, I, maybe because of the circles that I ran in and like being in Dundee for so long, modeling was ne never been like a thing that like, oh yeah, I'm gonna go be a model. Do you know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. never like a, an option. It's never a thing. But speaking of those guys, they're like, oh, test with this person, blah, 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 and then send your photos in. So did that. And I was with uh, Colors in Glasgow for a year, learned lots, did some some really fun shoots. And then just went off on my own and uh, just I've been freelance ever since. Um, nice, mate. And it's good, yeah, it's good fun. It's, it's a nice it's, it's a nice thing to do. And then it does help, obviously, when you, when you start to do um, DJing and stuff like that. It's nice to have, like, shots or if you if you yeah. want to do, like, more promo shoots and stuff like that, it's good to kind of have those skills in the bag. And then, obviously, it's nice to be making some some extra pocket money on the side. But Today. Uh, it's tough up here. Scotland's the... Uh, it's, uh, we'll say it's a grow, it's a growing the 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 modern scene in uh, yeah. Scotland's growing. It's not quite at the pace of everywhere else, but it's been it's been fun. It's been mm -hmm. uh, that is uh, something that I wanted to talk to you about, mate. Because uh, I know for sure, um, just I don't know it's something I've talked about on this podcast before as well. It's almost like the mentality of like the Scottish culture, and like if I had to think about high school and someone was to come out and say, "Yeah, I'm modelling," it would be like you would just be like what like who do you think you are do you know what I mean like it's yeah. that mentality it's like it's a stigma um is that something that you've experienced um I think because because by the time I started doing I was older right okay just yeah I was I, I was I'd gone past the whole like worrying what other people thought mm -hmm. and to be honest I didn't really hear and much of that any of that it was most of most of the chat was was actually quite encouraging. Like people kind of being like, "Oh, good on you, man!" Like, yeah, I'll speak to this person, or have you tried talking to them, or shooting with them, or it was, it was always quite encouraging. But yeah, no, I totally know what you mean. Like, um, kind of like the cultures up here is kind of quite self-deprecating. A hundred percent, and it's like almost like that. Oh, who did they think they are? Yeah. Kind of energy. But if I'm if if I'm being honest. I never really, I never really experienced yeah. that. So. That's class, mate. It comes with maturity as well. Like when I think back to high school, man, like it was an absolute bear pit. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. To, like it was so, it was so, it, it was ruthless, mate. Ruthless, man. Like anyone doing anything outside of the realm of normality, where someone would be like that's like a weird thing even like food you would eat like people would just ridicule you for a food that you would no one else would eat like just yeah. stuff like that man and like it's so tough to like sort of find yourself and at that age um i know for a fact like i would not have started a podcast in high school like just probably for fear of people judging me like like who does he think he is and sort of that feeling of like i don't want to start a podcast because i don't want people to think that I'm better than them or like stuff yeah, like that yeah yeah and it's mad because it's like it stifles so much creativity do you know what I mean yeah. like it it stops it stops things flourishing before it's eat, before they're even planted do you know what mm -hmm. I mean before the first sprouts even start to come out of the ground so it's like it is it is such a shame but I think I think we're definitely getting um coming through that and we're definitely um growing as as a as a as a nation as a culture as a group of people um to back back people's projects and i think moving to glasgow i definitely experienced that more like here there's so many like new food places popping up like people are starting different things like different podcasts or radio shows or like someone's doing a pop-up here or a new bar's opening here and it's like very much like support 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 as opposed to like yeah who do they think they are opening that place do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? which is good yeah. lots of love for glasgow lots of love for glasgow so. For sure. Um, do you have any like dream collaborations or like brands that you want to work with? I seen that you worked recently with like Shoe and like for doing uh, the Adidas uh, trainer. Is there like any brands that you have in, in your vision? Or, like, uh, I would, I would, bro. Do you know what I'd love to do? High fashion stuff. I think that'd be sick. Like to do to do something with any of like the fashion houses would be 
would be like crazy. Um, I'd love to do like uh, like Paris Fashion Week, be sick. Obviously, London Fashion Week would be sick. Um, New York Fashion Week would be sick. All all the fashion weeks, but yeah, I'd love to do something to do with like high fashion. Um, I'm a big Man United fan, um, so it'd be quite cool to do something with them at any point if I could. Um, but yeah, just any 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 opportunity. But honestly, I'm just I'm very thankful because I know that it's like it's not something that that everyone gets to do. And mm-hmm. Just I'm just very thankful for any opportunities I got. Like that the Adidas Oz Wiggle shoot that I did with shoes like was really cool. Um, and then like I went into the shoe uh, on Buchanan Street, and there's like a big massive like thing with me like on it, <laughs> like so surreal because. I don't know just you don't really when you're in the studio you're doing it you're like okay cool and then you get the photos and put a couple online and people like sick but then to actually like go in and like see it in the flesh like yeah yeah Yeah, that's cool that is cool mate that's quite quite a a cool thing to think about but see like i'm completely out of the loop uh, like the modeling industry like i'm not knowledgeable on it at all so like what if you're doing a shoot like what is your day like like how long are you shooting for like is it is it hours? Like, is it is it quite a, a, a time consuming process? And like, you like how many photos? I mean, you must take some amount of photos and things like that. Yeah, I mean, like, it, honestly, it really depends. But like, even like today, like I've obviously just come from from that shoot, and it's like you because because I'm freelance, it gives me a lot more kind of wiggle room, and it allows me to like work with different brands at different stages. Um, so like you can you arrange something and okay they've got this time frame and this is their budget and you kind of work within that okay this is how much I normally charge they're like right okay let's kind of meet in the middle or yeah we're happy to do that or and then it can be like this afternoon it was like a three hour shoot but then um the Adidas shoot was like a full day thing um I did the Scotland ad uh, the tenants ad sorry for Scotland for um they're like made for it uh, campaign that was literally like maybe an hour and a half yeah like, quite, nice. so, so just it really just depends like really just depends mm-hmm. on the project but um i think being freelance definitely is giving me the opportunity to just kind of work with like a lot of different yeah um, brands and a lot of different uh companies that maybe would struggle when they have to go through agencies and stuff like that so yeah i was going to say that so is that opposed to you having an agent you're just sort of dealing with all the brands yourself yeah and it's like it's it's good because it's not my main bag so i'll i'll only really do stuff if someone gets in touch with me and they're like yeah we'd we'd love to get you for this or you know through word of mouth or through working with a stylist they refer me for something or work with a photographer they refer me for something so it's kind of good in that sense because then it's it's only really jobs that, like I want to do that I'm doing, um. But because obviously if you're on if you're with an agency that are actually focused on you and want to kind of champion you, then they're looking for jobs. They're putting you forward for different things, so you will do more work, um, eventually. But yeah, I think just just for my life, my setup, I think the freelance thing's always, always just kind of been a better bag for me. I think now that I'm um, kind of looking to uh, be based a bit further down south, uh, I think it might be easier to be on an agency because there's more, there's way more work down there. So as far, it's like, it's opposed to like lots of people scrapping for crumbs. It's like, there's, there's more food to be eaten. So. Mm-hmm. So hopefully a lot easier but that's yeah. where my head's at with that. yeah the, the tenants advert was cool mate um, I was in the uh, the pub with my mates watching just before the game because they played it like right before kickoff. off um, yeah like um, it was like the adverts where they say like when they come back the game will start kind of thing and I was like no way man that's that's Josh I recognise your face I was like that's sick it was quite a cool advert mate and the bit where you were like chatting was cool yeah like it got it got everyone like proper pumped up. I think like yeah. I remember when I watched, that, I was properly like you could feel it like in your chest. Um, I was in London for like that kind of duration, like so I haven't actually seen it on the TV. Ah, right. uh, obviously, it's, it was on STV as opposed to like ITV. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. My mum was able to see it and stuff, which is 
which is cool, man. When when you're doing stuff and your folks are able to kind of see the fruits of it, then it, it does make it that little bit extra special. So that's nice. Is there are there any similarities between the music industry and the modeling industry? Do you think they sort of intertwine in a way, or are they just sort of separate parts of your life? Uh, that's a good question. Um, I've not really thought about it like that. I think maybe if I was doing more, more modeling and more kind of stuff on that side of the lens, I think about it a bit more. Mm-hmm. But I think because the those jobs were a little bit more few and far between, and then the music stuff's always been like a constant channel for me. Then I've not really thought about them in, in, intertwining. Um, but I mean, looking at like my influences, it's like definitely something that that I'd love to like do going forward. And if the opportunity presents itself, where you know could work with a brand and have me as an artist combined with like some modeling or some acting or whatever i think that'd be pretty sick but yeah yeah for sure that'd be cool yeah that's a nice bit um so over the over covid i noticed that you did the gig uh, in the barrowland um how was that because that's an iconic venue in scotland man like i've been many a night in there for gigs i've seen the view in there which is absolutely carnage man yeah um, when was that maybe 20 what was this 21 at least, I mean, I think I was 17, 18, so like a while ago. Um, Friday night in the Barrowland, absolutely nuts, man. Because uh, the, the boys always put on crazy live shows, man. Like, yeah, I remember, um, so obviously they came out of Gundy. My, mm-hmm. uh, my computing teacher is actually Kyle, the lead singer's uncle, gave him his like first guitar and that. So right. when they were coming through, he was like, Josh, like, check these guys out <laughs> shout, out, shout out Andy Campbell Mr Campbell like, <laughs> um, but yeah so like I'd been going to see them from like early early doors like in the doghouse and that so that, I can imagine seeing them somewhere like the Barland where they've been yeah. absolutely like, yeah. what a space mm-hmm, for sure um, so how did that come about? Um, so um, so Duncan um, Dee Dee Watermelon um, I had been wanting to kind of put something together um, to raise money for like men's mental health and um, got together with the Chai Brothers in Arms um, and then um, obviously reached out to myself, um, Beth and uh, Jack Master, trying to put something together and then the Barlands offered him the space and obviously for anyone who's watched it, like the the um, shout out to the tech team because they made it look absolutely insane. Like it's, it's definitely one of the coolest things I've done. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously in such an iconic space, but to do that for something that's really close to my heart as well, like men's mental health and mental health in general, it's like it was, it was cool. And then that's obviously that was the first like thing I'd done like since what March twenty twenty. So yeah. yeah, it was like I was first up. So you like. Hitting, about to hit the cue button, <laughs> and like, but as soon as, as soon as the first track started running, I was I was in. And if you've seen it, you'll see me uh, dancing about, having a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, lot, lots of love to Dunk Man. He really put put a lot of effort into that. And um, yeah, he says the next one we do is gonna be gonna be live, thankfully. But uh, but yeah, to do that live stream, yeah, it was such a such an amazing opportunity, and yeah, just an honor to raise money for something yeah. that's. Heart, yeah. yeah class mate um were you like were you a fan of like edm like sort of back in the day like like um when that was coming up um <laughs> uh, so swedish house mafia yeah okay right okay like mate do you know they played the barrowland really yeah mate there's a video on youtube um one of my, my big cousin's mates was there and i was like when I, when I st- first started getting into, like, dance music and that Swedish House Mafia, one of the biggest influences, and, like, obviously that's just the way you find your, in- find your way yeah, into it. Yeah, there's no rules, man. There's no rules. Yeah, that's it. And, like, um, I was a huge fan of, like, I remember he told me that, and I was like, you are joking me. They did not <laughs> play the band. And, like, they're right enough, there's a video, and it's, like, uh, one, and... um they do like a mashup into some other song and it's in the band. <laughs> the thought of that is just mind boggling. 
<laughs> no man. Um, um, yeah, they they were yeah like that time that was a, like a very interesting time because like that was obviously when you're kind of coming out of that like 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 mainstream music was kind of coming out of that indie phase where indie was like kind of the main genre and then it was getting like a lot more electronic and then obviously Swedish House Mafia come together and like they kind of do their thing and I remember me and uh, a many busload of folk from Edinburgh travelled down for their last gig in the UK. It was in the Milton Keynes Bowl. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that was that was insane, man. That was like lots of lots of fun memories from that trip. So you were, but, you were at that gig, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice, yeah, yeah. I remember what that because that was the Don't You Worry Child video, wasn't it? Uh, um, yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they had like the like the Union Jacks like on the side of the stage and. The, Oh, and the, the visuals, yeah, sick. Yeah, bro, I was obsessed with them, mate. Like honestly, <laughs> thinking about it, like loved them, man. Um, mate, they they had like three comebacks, and then they just like sort of disappeared. Like they announced like coming back, and then they played the gig, and then they came back again. Like, fuck those, man. Uh, the, the money, the money must not have been money in at that point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it, man. Needed to top up the bank accounts, I think. Yeah, usually what a comeback entails. So. <laughs> So in terms of what's coming up, bro, you've got the slam tent. Um, is there anything else that you've got in the pipeline? Yeah, so um, it was actually the first proper gig um, that I got booked for post post lockdown. Um, it's at Riverside. So you do, yeah. Riverside Festival on the Saturday, um, which is going to be like so much fun. Um, yeah. Really looking forward to that. I think the, like, obviously the lineup across the weekend is really good, but the Saturday lineup was already one that I was like, mm-hmm. I was going to be going to anyway, be playing. It's like, yeah, some buzz. Um, it's going to be like the first time I've played there. And it was actually the last one was the first time I'd even ever been to Riverside. So it's cool to go from one year, like be into the next, well, next year, two years, but yeah, yeah. Um, to the next year kind of playing. Um, and then I'm playing a uh, Cultivate Festival up in Aberdeen, um, which is also in September, um, which I'm really looking forward to playing on the Sunday at that. Uh, and then there's a few other a few other bits and pieces happening, um, which which will come to light soon enough. But um, yeah, Glasgow, I've got I've got a new a new residency. Um, one of the one of the kind of institutions in Glasgow, which I'm going to be announcing over the next next few weeks weeks, which is which I'm like super excited for. Um, it's a place that I've been going to like since I moved through. So, um, to be on the residence roster is is going to be massive. So yeah, people just need to keep an eye on uh, Kilimanjaro Music socials, um, for the update on that. Um, and then there's I've got some stuff down south. That I've kind of got cooking. I've got my first London gig on Saturday, the tenth of July, um, at Brixton Jam, um, with Volvco. Shout out, shout out, my man Volvco. Um, yeah, lots, lots, lots happening. Lots nice happening. man. Um, really want to get back into to production. I think because I was working out of other studios, other spaces pre pre COVID. I've never really had to set up at home. Um, so I've really missed that. I think a lot of people were able to put things together over a lot of them where they were able to like work on stuff from home. Um, but I've not I've not really been able to get in the production production studio for a for a while. So um pre-COVID, I was working on stuff with or not pre-COVID, in that little middle pocket in the summer, I was working on stuff with um, Dixon Avenue basement jams guys. Um with uh, with Kenny Watt, my guy. Um, so got got some bits working that I've been working on with him that I'm hopefully going to put out soon. Um, and uh, I'm going to hopefully get in the studio with one of my boys, Rennie, um, who's from Edinburgh, but is based in London now. So going to get working on some some proper Afro house belters with him and get get that cooking over the summer. So yeah, look look out for. New music hopefully coming people's way in September. That's the plan. Um, but I'm just I'm just looking forward to getting active again, man. It's like it's been a long 18 months, as I've said. Yeah. I'm just really looking forward to getting active. For sure, mate. And um, what's to look forward to by the sounds of it, mate? 
um, quality. Uh, before I let you go, mate, um, I've, uh, one final question that I like to ask anyone who is involved um, with music and as an artist, and um, it's what does music mean to you? I mean, for me, music is everything, you know? Like, I start my day with music. When I'm working on stuff, music's on. If I'm needing to think or if I'm needing to chill out or if I'm needing to get pumped up, like it's it's in music, you know, and there's there's different types of music for every situation. Um, but yeah, music is everything to me. I think like when people look for their purpose in life and what they wanna what they wanna leave behind, um a lot of mine is is to do with music and and if that's not making music, it's it's playing music for people. It's showing people different genres of music that they might not have heard before, um, using music to express myself. And I think definitely that's come from from drumming. Like whenever I was like stressed or um, just needed a break from stuff or wanted to like just let out some energy, like drumming's always been like had always been my go-to. Obviously before before I started DJing, so like having that in the pocket from like the age of 12 it's like it just becomes just part of your life um but yeah music's everything um and it's 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 actually such a it's such a blessing that i'm able to do that as a as a career and props to like my granddad and then my dad to set the foundations mom and dad to set the foundations for me to even be able to do that do you know what i mean like um because I know a lot of people don't have the opportunity to do these things. So very thankful. Um, but yeah, music's everything, man. Very Class, fun. mate. Uh, Josh, it's been an absolute pleasure, mate. It's really nice to speak to you. Um, Thank you so much for having me, bro. No worries, mate. Um, hopefully I'll get to meet you at some point in the future. And, um, yeah, no, 100%, sure, man. 100%. I'm sure I'll see you on a dance floor somewhere at some point, man. Yeah, if not before, then I'll see you in the slam pen. Yeah. <laughs> Too right, mate. Um, thanks for coming on, mate. Really appreciate it. No, no, thank you for having me, man. Much appreciated, bro. Cheers, mate. In a bit. Thanks for listening, guys. Cheers.